why people in this part of the world can't get the surgery that you get in New York, in London, in uh, you know Frankfurt. Dr. Sanduk Ruiz's mission is to help the blind see no matter how poor they are. The Nepali eye doctor has developed a method for treating cataracts inexpensively and effectively. To date, he has restored eyesight to over 100,000 patients. Dr. Ruit and his team make the rounds of Nepal's rural areas. They operate on local people who've developed cataracts. Our mission is to deliver high quality, sustainable eye care, especially for those who are marginalized. And uh, that's really the essence of our mission. And, uh, working for almost more than three decades. Uh, our team, I have a feeling, our team has got the solution to combat avoidable blindness effectively. And he backs up that claim with thousands of cases. Dr. Ruit runs several hospitals in Kathmandu and other Nepali cities where patients of little means can get treatment. The kicker is that, only a few years after opening, these hospitals are already paying for themselves. We have encouraged people who have money to pay full, and uh, people who don't have much money pay subsidized, and thereby we can bring in some patients who cannot afford to pay free of cost. Dr. Ruit has the lenses required for the operation made right in his hospital. He even exports them. At first, he ruffled some feathers in the industry. The going price for a lens was around 200 US dollars. Dr. Ruit brought it down to $3. These lenses are intended for patients in Nepal's southern Terai region. Ordinarily, very few people in the area would have access to medical care. Cataracts have left Gilasi Harijan functionally blind in both eyes. She can only distinguish light and dark and is dependent on help from her relatives. I can't do anything at all. I just sit around. Sometimes I look after my grandchildren. What can I do? Absolutely nothing. Her son Ajay is the family's sole provider. I'd be very happy if my mother were able to see again. So she'd be able to go everywhere on her own. Now, along with hundreds of pre-examined patients, Gilasi is waiting for her operation, which will be free of charge. Dr. Ruit's motivation for treating people like Gilasi was not born of idealism. He came from a poor family in a tiny remote village in the Himalayas. In his youth, it hadn't occurred to him to take up medicine until one particular decisive experience. One of my closest, uh, my, you know, person to me was my younger sister. And uh, she and I used to live uh, in Kathmandu uh, uh, while I was going to school. She developed uh, uh, tuberculosis way back in uh, probably late 60s. We took her to the doctor and the doctor said uh, she's resistant to the primary line of medication. She needs to have secondary line of medication. And, uh, um, you know, we didn't have money and access to the second line of... So the doctor said uh, the best you could do is take her home. And uh, so I had a little uh, conversation with her. And she said, uh, brother, you have a capacity, a potential to do something in life. And uh, please do not forget and do something in life, she said. And, uh, you know, maybe this is probably the last time we're going to meet. Not long after that, Dr. Ruit's sister died. 
While Dr. Ruit is still on his way to the south of Nepal, his team starts making preparations. Over the next few days, they'll be operating on nearly 1,000 patients. The base for their mobile surgical unit this time is the Lumbini Buddhist pilgrimage site with its dozens of temples. Hello. Hi. Our colleagues are saying they can give us the big generator for the lights permanently. The Thai Meditation Center provided the space. This time, the surgery marathon is being funded with money from Thailand. The conditions are almost luxurious in comparison with many places they've worked, such as Nepal's Mustang region on the border with Tibet. We had to get there on a small twin otter plane, you know, those uh, dangerous twin otter planes. And from there, we had to walk or on the horseback for almost four days to reach uh, uh, and uh, often travel across uh, passes of 16,000 feet to get there. We needed to hang in, uh, you know, a solution to get into the eye, so we used bandages to hang it, uh, you know, with nails on the ceiling. And uh, we improvised some baits, wooden baits with nails and, you know, things like that. The next morning, the four surgeons have arrived and the operations can begin. Hundreds of cataract patients come, hoping they'll be able to see again. Good morning. Do you have a flashlight? Dr. Ruit looks over the patients. Gilasi is here too, waiting for her operation. The doctor prepares for his first surgery. Uh, I think uh, we're going to do probably about 250 patients today. And uh, at least 250 patients have been screened. And uh, this will continue for another four days. The surgeons all share the operating theater, working side by side. Now it's Gilasi's turn. Dr. Ruit himself will operate on both of her eyes, one after the other. He's very precise and extremely quick. On average, he only takes five to seven minutes per eye. Dr. Ruit removes the clouded lens. He developed this technique himself in the 1980s. In Western country, they used to take about 45 minutes to one hour for surgery. And, uh, you know, long and used a lot of disposables and it's very expensive. A new method was required for the Nepali villagers. I was uh, virtually sleeping, eating, dreaming about the surgical technique. Nearly after five years of, you know, a lot of hard work, we came down to establish a surgical technique that was fairly simple and uh, still get very good results and low cost and could be done to a lot of patients. Dr. Ruit's method has been applied in countries like Indonesia, Ethiopia, and even North Korea. Now doctors come from all around the world to learn from him. This time, he and his team enjoy support from Thai doctors and volunteers. Dr. Chupong Isaran Arangpan and Dr. Nawapurn Desha Manasatid have learned from him. When I saw the new operating technique, which doesn't use stitches or ultrasound, I was impressed. And since then, I've been using this method on my patients in Thailand. In my case, somebody told me about an operating method that took less than 10 minutes. At first, I couldn't believe it. But then, when I saw Dr. Ruit do it, I was amazed, and I wanted to learn it from him. An artificial lens adapted to Gilasi's vision is implanted in her eye. And she's made it through the procedure. Wait. 
Now, everybody can rest up for the next day. The next morning, the 253 patients who've had their operations come for their follow-up exam. It's the moment of truth for Gilasi. She'll find out if she can see again. There it is. For the moment, please keep your eyes closed. The big moment has come. Now, you can open your eyes and look over here. Ah, can you see? Do you see anything? Yes, yes. Look over here. Can you see all right? Yes, very well. How many fingers am I holding up? Five. And now? Two. And now? Five. I wanted so much to be able to see again. I wanted to look at my doctor. Now I can see everything. Grab my finger. One last checkup. Gilasi's operation went smoothly with no complications. I really feel great, not only for the fact that they are able to see, but that they can make a difference in their family uh, back home. In a subsistence family like ours, a joint family, agricultural family, uh, all the family members are twined together very closely. And one member is disturbed, the whole rhythm of the family is disturbed and there's an economical pressure, there's a social pressure. So this member will go back and revitalize the rhythm of the family.